Uh, just to clarify, is this the Art with Code workshop? Unmute. Zoom. Hello, Zoom. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm not very Zoom capable, honestly. Anyway, immersive media is uh, sort of a catch-all term for lots of different things. Uh, one of the main focuses of our program is virtual and augmented reality. Those are sort of the easiest ones that people tend to know right off the bat. But we've got other things like projection mapping, generative art, sound design, 3D, space sound design, uh, and also physical computing using sensors to bring outside data into computers so that you can play around with that data in creative ways, which uh, basically all of those things I mentioned minus the AR and VR, that this is a little AR, we're going to be doing today, but hopefully I'm not disappointed anyone, you're not going to actually need your laptops. This is just going to be a demo where I'm breaking down a project that I've just been working on to demonstrate a bunch of technologies and how to combine them and wire them together and use them at once to create a creative application using code. Uh, 
A uh, little bit of background about me is that I graduated here 10 years ago from UMD's art program. And back then, there was one class dedicated to creative coding where we used processing, which I heard some murmurs about processing. Uh, but for those of you that don't know, processing is a development environment where you can create visual and audio and dance based applications with code. And yeah, I'm an artist, so I like to use code as my medium. I don't like to use code for bad things like war. Who's with me there? Anyone? All right, cool. You guys seem to like Ward. That's uh, all right. That's your choice. So I want to start this presentation formally with a video. Uh, this is a classically trained musician from the early to mid uh, 20th century called Clara Rockmore, and she's playing a theremin, which I will explain afterwards for those of you that don't know. And it needs to play. So this projection and video quality seems a little blurry, but there's an antenna here and an antenna here. And this is a musical instrument. It's a type of musical synthesizer, some might call it. And the way it works is just by detecting uh, electrical capacitance in the air based on how close the left and right hand are to the antennae. So this antenna controls the pitch and you can see her vibrating her hand and that's creating sort of that vibrato effect uh, for those of you who are musicians or singers. And then this hand is getting closer and farther away from the second antenna which controls volume. And by combining these two parameters, you can end up with this beautiful and in some cases eerie music. So this has been used in a lot of stuff pretty much in the middle of the last century uh, for predominantly horror films. They would use it to make spooky ghost sounds and, uh, you know, just like siren songs, stuff like that. But she was a classically trained musician, so she was treating it more like a violin and uh, applying it to very beautiful music. And she's one of the premier theremists, thereminists of all time. So I wanted to share that with you because what we will be doing today is creating a digital theremin with a little device called the uh, Connect Azure. So has anyone seen this thing right here? It's a camera. Anyone? Anyone? I know you have any. Uh, this is a Connect Azure. It is a depth camera and an RGB camera. Everyone knows red, green, blue, RGB, cool, normal camera, normal camera, but it also measures depth. And it's modeled off of the Xbox Connect. It used to be a uh, video game controller where people could interact with the video game spatially. And that's because this is recording volumetric video. It's not actually, we're not recording. I mean, Zoom's recording. So FYI, you are gonna kind of be recorded, but not just through this camera, through Zoom. Just a little disclaimer, if anyone's uncomfortable, raise your hand and I can like, Turn it that way. We're good, we're good. Cool. So like I was saying, this measures volumetric video. It creates volumetric video rather. And so if I open up this little application and close this little application, you can see a little demo of that. So as you can see here, we've got a regular feed that's coming from the regular camera. We've also got this colored feed, which is illustrating the depth camera. And we have an infrared feed, which is measuring infrared light and displaying that. But I can switch it over to this 3D mode. And you can see yourselves as 3D point clouds. This is what's called a point cloud. Uh, it is a cloud of points. The points are technically called voxels. They're the 3D version of pixels. And so they are being rendered in a 3D virtual space, right? I can twist this around, I can zoom in, zoom out, 
And I could also apply the color from the depth camera to make a much more realistic depiction. You can also play around with those voxels and make them really big and then you all become really